Hey, and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get a ton of stuff done without having to work any harder. I've read every book on time management and productivity for two reasons. The first reason is I want all the good stuff in life. I don't want to worry about money. I want to have a successful career. I want a clean house. I want lots of hobbies. I just want like all the good stuff. But the second reason is I'm incredibly lazy and I don't want to work. Like I want all the things, but I don't want to have to work for it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I've discovered. These little like hacks and tricks. And the number one hack, the number one trick that has the biggest impact is daily planning. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna show you exactly how to plan, make it feel effortless, and I'm gonna show you five different ways to plan because everybody's different. So find the one that's gonna work best for you. So I'm gonna start with the technique that I use and love. It's pretty amazeballs. You might be a person who's already like doing a planning thing. A lot of people do. You're writing down your appointments or the big things you want to do in either a planner or on a calendar, but daily planning is different. What I mean by that is like managing your day and the tasks that you're doing in that day. And so for me, the technique I use is called the top three technique. So every single night before bed, I brain dump all the things that I want to do the next day. These can be things like vacuum or big things like film a video or I don't know what you do in a day, but all the cool things you want to do. So you brain dump them all out and then you circle your top three. So you pick the biggest, most important things, the things that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. And those are the things that you focus on the next day. A lot of people also call this like eating your frog. You've probably heard me talk about that before. So what you want to do is either grab a notebook. If you're visual, use post-its or have like a, something up that you can see and write down your top three, starting with the most important thing. And this is all you're focusing on that day. Like this is what you're getting done. You may have other things that you wanna do. You may start vacuuming or wander away like if you're like me and get distracted. But this, having this like written down some more, even in your phone with alerts to remind you of your top three is going to help you prioritize your time, know what's important and refocus you back to those three things. If I do those three things, I just go back to my brain dump and pick something new to continue on doing. But at the very least, if I can get these three things done, I am way more productive than I would be if I was just doing whatever I felt like doing in the moment. I promise you this top three method is pretty amazing. This next daily planning technique is perfect if you have ADHD or you get easily distracted, or you have a really big task that feels overwhelming, but you have to break it down into little parts. This is called the Pomodoro Technique. And basically what you do is you break your day into 25 minute chunks, set a timer. So you grab your phone, you set a timer for 25 minutes, work on that task, and then take a five minute break, or a 10 minute break, or a 15 minute break, and then go back and set your timer again for 25 minutes. So this like start stop technique actually keeps you motivated. It actually makes things attainable because when that timer goes off and it's you're done resting, you feel rejuvenated again. You feel ready to continue on. My kids use this technique for studying all the time. And I really do use this technique on big projects where I'm feeling very overwhelmed. And the only thing you need to do this is a piece of paper, even your daily planner and some sort of timer. So again, the Pomodoro, it doesn't have to be 25 minutes, but this start stop technique throughout your day, giving yourself a ton of breaks will make you so much more productive. Today's video is brought to you by Grammarly. I've been using Grammarly for a few years because I'm not good at spelling or grammar, but I just started using their new product, Grammarly Go. The hardest part of my job is coming up with ideas. So I love that Grammarly Go is an AI assistance tool that does things like brainstorm with me. I'll type in the idea for this video, 10 ways to daily plan or 10 ways to make 
planning easier, and Grammarly Go really helps generate lots of ideas that honestly I wouldn't have thought of, but it also helps improve the ideas that I already have. Not only can I set my voice in the tone that I want it to be, but after we've generated ideas, Grammarly Go can rewrite those ideas, shorten it, or make it more concise. It's really amazing what you can do with Grammarly Go. Right now, you can save 20% off. Go to Grammarly.com forward slash clutterbug. That's Grammarly.com forward slash clutterbug to save 20% right now. This next technique is definitely one of the most popular of all time when it comes to daily planning and time management. You've probably heard a bazillion people talk about it, and that is time blocking. And basically what time blocking is, is structuring your day ahead of time to create a rhythm and a routine. So you actually mark off different times of the day, whether it's an hour or two hours or four hours. And within that block, you're focusing on one thing, maybe admin stuff and like boring computer stuff in the morning for an hour. And then for me, I usually do content creation from one till four. Maybe you have cleaning that you want to do, so you time block off some time there. And it doesn't have to be super rigorous. It doesn't have to be like, 6.45, I'm doing blah -ba -dee bloop Nobody wants that level of control. But it does give you a way of focusing and making sure that you're like doing what you have to do within that time and then the ability to move on when that time block is done. So it's keeping your day flowing, it's keeping you feeling productive, but it doesn't feel insanely structured. It's more of a rhythm. And I really like these tearaway pads for doing this. So you can get these on Amazon, just like tear it off and start again, but they also have like time blocking, really inexpensive planners. So you can have a new one for each day. This technique isn't for everyone. If you don't love the idea of this type of structure, I get it. I don't really use this technique myself, but I know so many highly productive people who swear by time blocking. This next technique is called get things done and it's really perfect for perfectionists, overthinkers, people who are really overwhelmed with all the amazing things that they want to accomplish. What you do is start by brain dumping or typing out all the things that you want to do, whether it's paint the bedroom, vacuum the house, do the garden outside, put them all down and next we organize them. Most people who use this technique organize using apps like Trello or other type of online digital organizing tools and they'll color code and they'll put things in different little folders and categories. But you can also do this with post-it notes, just using different colored post-it notes. So you could put all the home DIYs into one section. All the cleaning can be another color. Maybe you want to do something for work. Maybe it's course creation or write a book. All of the work-related tasks can be another color. And so you want to break them down and organize them. And now every day you just pick from the different tasks. This helps people who definitely overthink, who over plan, really get organized, get your thoughts organized and have one central place for everything, but it doesn't feel as overwhelming because everything's in different categories, whether it's digital or it's just using post-its. It's gonna help you stay focused and feel really, really productive, but most importantly, it's gonna kind of give you ideas of where to start because you just have to pick one color and one thing and focus on that first. And the last technique is definitely the easiest, but one that, believe it or not, very few people actually do, and that's a basic daily to-do list. I want you to think about your own life. You probably get up, you go to work, you come home, you make dinner, like you have things you're doing, but have you written an actual to-do list? Things outside the things that you just routinely do. This is key. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite tools that I use. I'm serious. This has changed my life. Obviously, just having a notebook. I have notebooks in every single room in my house, mostly because I have ADHD, but also because writing a to-do list, it gets it out of my brain. It puts it on paper, which means I'm way more likely to actually do it. It also helps me focus so I can now take my brain dump and do the top three technique. But my daughter, who's in grade 11 and struggling, she loves these tearaway pads. This one I know has a swear word on it. Listen, it's for a teenager. She loves this. 
And I'm telling you, she's getting so much more done. So every morning she writes down all the hard stuff she has to do and all the easy stuff she has to do. And she doesn't always check it all off, but just breaking it down into like hard and easy, for some reason that really helps her brain. She usually picks the easy stuff, but sometimes she'll pick like one or two hard things too. So this is a great daily technique to use. Also, if you're more of a week planner, I do love this big tearaway pad too. So it gives you just a few like daily to do's that you want to This isn't like going to a doctor's appointment. It's what are you doing this day? What do you want to accomplish? That's above and beyond the normal things that you do, like going to work, having dinner, going to bed write them down on here and I promise you, you're way more likely to get them done. The last thing that you can do for a daily to-do is just like behind me, it's post-it notes, especially if you're visual, write them down, put them somewhere where you'll remember. Again, that visual cue means you're really going to get them done. And also if you're like me and you have a terrible memory, my favorite app is called Structured. I've tried all of them. I've tried the to-do app. There's like a Microsoft one I've tried. I like Structured the best. It syncs with my regular calendar. It has alerts. It'll send it to my Apple Watch when I remember to wear my Apple Watch. But I just love this because I can like check, I've done this and I've done this, yeah, yeah, and I've done this. It feels good. It's like the same checklist, like checking off on a piece of paper checklist, but you also get the added benefit of getting the alerts and getting those reminders. And it's always with you in your pocket because you always have your phone. So whatever you decide, here's what I'm going to say. Don't just have a calendar that plans your things like doctor's appointments or people's birthday. Daily plan too. Decide what you want to accomplish today and write it down. Use one of these five techniques we talked about because I'm telling you, I promise you, you are going to be insanely productive. Let me know in the comments below if you have other ways of planning your day that are really effective and if you have a favorite like daily planner or weekly planner. I love the idea of having a planner that I carry around, but I always forget where it is and um, forget to remember to use it. So I'm more of like a notebook person and to-do list. Like that's my jam. Sometimes I keep things visual, especially if I'm doing stuff with Emily. So we have the bulletin boards because she's visual, but know yourself, try different things. But the real point of this whole video was to inspire you to actually do it, like actually plan. There's only a small percentage of people who do this on a daily basis. And those are the people that are getting a ton of stuff done. So join us friends, grab that piece of paper and start planning right now. We'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Disclaimer, this end story is gross and also probably one that you've heard before because I've shared it because it's awesome, okay? This is the story about something my grandmother did. It's her birthday, so in honor of that, I thought I would share her weirdness with you. She doesn't mind me sharing this because she's hilarious and awesome and always laughs at all her ridiculousness, whether she's getting stuck in a recycling box for four hours, whether she's just, oh my, lost and, and driving around with groceries on the top of her car. My grandmother is a hoot, you guys. But this one story kind of, kind of stuck with me. She went to a baby shower at somebody's house. There was a ton of other ladies there. She was waiting in line to use the restroom. When it was her turn to go in, she discovered that there was a giant poop in the toilet. So big that it wouldn't actually flush. And the water was like overflowing. So she turned off the water to the toilet, but then she didn't want like the people outside to think that this was her poop, the people waiting in line, you know? So like she could have, opened the door and said somebody else clogged the toilet. She could have used the toilet brush to mash it up. There's things she could have done, all of which are gross. But my grandmother, in all her anxiety and all her stress glory, took that poop out of the toilet with toilet paper, wrapped it up real good and tucked it in her purse then turned the water valve back on and flushed and then left the bathroom. But now she's got a poop in her purse, but she continued on the whole, she didn't, she didn't want to like 
take the poop and put it in a garbage can. She's like, I'll take it home and throw it out. So she continued the rest of the party with someone's giant poop in her purse. Someone else's giant poop in her purse and then went home and drove home with the giant somebody else's poop in the purse and i just think <laughs> this is like people pleasing or anxiety i don't know what you call this but also like i could totally see myself doing this you know what i mean let me know in the comments below if you can see how this happened to her because she didn't want to be embarrassed she didn't want the other people to be embarrassed so she just fixed the situation and now she's forever known as the grandma with the poop in her purse thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time